are going to the northwest next, where we continue our focus, of course, um, on the crumbling infrastructure across the country. When it comes to our municipalities, we zoom into the northwest now, where all 22 municipalities failed to obtain clean audits, uh, political squabbles, misuse of funds, and poor leadership are just some of the factors contributing to the decaying situation in that province. Bafidile Morane is tracking that story for us. Uh, Bafidile, maybe just give us a, a little bit of a, a clear picture of where exactly you are in the northwest. And, you know, we know that 22 out of the 23 municipalities there did not receive clean audits. One of those municipalities, um, or basically one of those provinces that, of course, also can't deliver when it comes to service delivery issues, and the list continues. But what's the latest you can tell us? Well, Baron, it's about 22 municipalities in total here in the northwest, and according to the Auditor General's latest report sometime around June, July, um, it is stipulating that all the municipalities did not get a clean, clean audit. Rather. So that's really a serious challenge for a number of municipalities. We know that, among others, fruitless expenditure. Um, it's one of the challenges, corruption, it's one of the challenges in a number of municipalities here. But for now, I want to engage Salga, which is very, working very close with the provincial government together with these municipalities to understand as to what could be the challenges um, that we are seeing to the point whereby communities across the province are left to suffer uh, to, uh, the greatest brunt felt by them with lack of service delivery. So, uh, Mr. Kumalo Molefe is the chairperson of Salga in the Northwest. Thank you so much for, for joining us here at ENCA. Thank you very much, and to your viewers, uh, thank you for having us. I would say the state of municipalities is in shambles, disarray, if, um, if I could describe it. What could be the cause of the challenges here? I don't think we are in a state of shambles and disarray. I will argue and submit that uh, the problems we are having are complex and historic. Uh, Northwest comes from an era of infighting and literal instability. That is in the hist historic past and the, and the appointment of people who did not meet the requirements. That is our history. We are ashamed of it. But I will look you in the eye and tell you that uh, uh, that belongs to the history. Currently, there's leadership in the province, there's political stability, and once you have political stability, that transcends into governance. And therefore, I submit here with authority that the majority of our municipal councils, as we speak, are but stable, except one two pockets of instability in Ditsobota and Mamusa. But generally, where we are, there is relative stability and order the center is holding, and we have embarked on, 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 on interventions to correct the system. One of the problems that we can't run away from is that we appointed people who did not meet the requirements in the past. Currently, I vouch that uh, we are at 95% a percent of filling senior management post, and I vouch that the majority, if not all of the people, have passed the litmus test. They qualify, uh, they are competent, and we are beginning to see the impact. So we are encouraged where we are. When are we going to see that impact? For a very long time, uh, I've covered the Northwest. Community members are still crying foul even today. We spoke to a number of them that will play their clips later on, who are saying that um, it looks like they are left on their own. Uh, government is not really taking um, any steps to better the situation. You've given an example about Ditsobotla and Mamusa. Those <coughs> are the worst municipalities in the northwest, if not in the country. The political instability there. Would you blame it on the coalition government? No, coalition is part of democracy. It's part of a, an evolving democracy. I would not blame it on that, whether you are from the opposition or the ruling party. Uh, once you get to council, you are a councillor of the people, you represent the people. So we must take ownership for that. So I would never blame it on, 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 on that. But you ask me a question, when is it improving? Uh, and my answer is that we are doing something about it now. You see, we, we have stabilized our relationship with the provincial government 
co we, are, we are working cooperatively in terms of the district development model, and that is why working together with the provincial government, we are now intervening on service delivery. We have together joined, uh, uh, launched a program called uh, Tunsale Roli, where every week we target a municipality for five days. We deal with potholes, street lightings, water challenges, and all that. When we get out of the municipality, the, the, the impact is felt. We do that program every week. Now, in every municipality, every, every Friday is a service delivery acceleration day. So we are doing something about it now. So the northwest of yesterday and the northwest of now are totally different. And that's why I argue the center is now holding. But of course, we deal with communities, they are dynamic, the demand is just too big and too wide. The money is very little. Let's talk about issues of corruption. Um, just in the past week, I've seen um, the news circulating that a former manager at Bujanala District Municipality bought two laptops with two million. Um, a number of municipalities, we've seen uh, SIU visiting the Northwest from the time of COVID-19 pandemic in relation to the PPE procurement and investigations are currently underway. Wouldn't we say that corruption is prevailing? What's your view in relation to corruption in municipalities in the Northwest? Corruption is one of the problems that we have uh, generally in the province and countrywide. What is important is what do we do about that corruption where, where it raises its ugly head. We have law enforcement agencies that are intact and solid. You wouldn't be telling me about the story of the arrest of an official if our law enforcement agencies were not in order. The fact that they are in order, action is, is being taken. What I can assure you of is that there is political will. Even here where we are sitting, We've got SIU reports. Ask me what have you done about it. We are acting on them. We have instituted disciplinary action. The issue is whether there is political will and courage to act on corruption where it raises its ugly head. So whether it's material irregularities by the Auditor General, whether it's SIU referrals, we are acting on them as this cohort of a new leadership in office now. Just before we wrap, I just want us to focus now on Dizobota local municipality. It's now placed under Section 1395A of the Constitution, which speaks to the financial <coughs> intervention. For a very long time, that municipality it has been marred by challenges, physical fights we have seen. We saw the provincial government intervening <coughs> ahead of the 2021 local government by implementing Section 139B of the Constitution by in, uh, sending the administrator. That particular administrator never set foot in that municipality. Just a year after the 2021 local government elections, the municipality was dissolved by invoking Section 1319C of the Constitution. And still today, the municipality is saying that it doesn't have even a single cent to buy a tissue. What's the issue in Ditsobotla? Ditsobotla is my headache over and above being the provincial chairperson of Salgam, the district mayor of this uh, munisp uh, municipality, Nakamadiri Mulema. Ditsobotla is our economic cornerstone. We can't allow Ditsobotla to fail, and that is why together with the provincial government, we have intervened, we are giving support, we have sent a team there, so Ditsobotla will have to turn the corner. We can't allow it to fail, but the history of Ditsobotla is embarrassing because I can tell you, and, and this is very serious, of all our five municipalities in this district, Ditsobotla is our economic cornerstone, but it is a headache. As we speak, Ditsobotla has not paid salaries. I must find a way to look for that money I don't have. It's a headache. Uh, but maybe it's a necessary headache. We will change the Tsobotla. We have put interventions and systems in place. The Tsobotla will turn. Okay, well, thank you so much. Uh, Kumalo Molefe is the chairperson of Salga in the northwest there, Baron. Talking about the state of local government in the northwest, a very serious challenge as you in, uh, hear him indicating that the Tsobotla local municipality is one of the headaches 
uh, in the province. And we understand sometime around June, the provincial government announced that about eight municipalities in the province have been identified by the National Treasury and placing them under Section 1395A and C of the Constitution, which speaks to the financial intervention. So from here, we will engage residents on the ground to hear um, how um, challenges of service delivery affecting them and also go to this about the local municipality to see what's the status quo at this point. Because you've had Salga Chairperson indicating their baron to say that even right now, salaries are not paid to workers. Since the beginning of this year, for the better part of this year, um, salaries have been coming very late at that municipality. The municipality indicating that they do not have money. And we also engage the provincial government to hear what kind of intervention besides sending officials there uh, as part of Section 1395 A and C. What else are they doing? Because people who are suffering, it's a resident on the ground, including the workers who are not paid. Mm. Very true what you're saying there, Bafadila. Thank you so much uh, for that. Of course, we heard from Salga that, you know, things are turning around in the northwest. Uh, but, of course, um, Bafadila was right in saying, and we all know, that the situation is still very dire there. Uh, 22 out of those 23 municipalities not receiving clean audits, but it goes even deeper than that. You know, service delivery issues are still a huge pain in that province. And at the end of the day, of course, it is the residents that are suffering. Um, but, of course, we will be keeping you updated as to what exactly is happening, not just in the northwest, but also the Mangahu. Um, metro as well. Those two, um, those municipalities in the northwest and Mangahung, of course, um, one of those, some of those province um, municipalities in the country that, of course, are crippling under um, infrastructure um, and um, other issues as well. Of course, service delivery being one of the main ones of that. But thank you so much, Bafadula Morane.